Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. Matt Belinsky, you made it in. I did. You made it in from Los Into Angeles. the Austin apocalypse. We're proud of you. Thank you, thank you. I, I, was, st- I was supposed to be out of here. Ostopolips. On Stonkolips. I figured if I'm really going to affirm my contrarian bona fides, I got to go to the place that everyone's trying to leave. Yes, right? dude. You've got to get in the belly of the beast. You've got to find out the story. That's kind of what you do. That's your Absolutely, thing. Absolutely, yeah. So you're here. You made it to Austin, Texas. I, I couldn't get out yesterday, but you got a flight in from L.A. I did. I, did. I was supposed to come in last night, actually, but you know, delayed me about 12 hours. Got a morning flight. Very yeah. elitist, man. Yes, just, I, I try to be. Very yeah. elitist. The yeah, idea. and if you, I mean, technically speaking, you're kind of an internet thought, so you should be, <laughs> yeah. you should yeah. be moving to fucking Miami right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, you have, what, if, as a follower of mine on the internet, you've yeah. seen how much time I've been doing in yeah. Miami recently. Miami is where all Proudly. the So all, all the people leaving L.A., the, the people with kids are all going to Nashville or Austin, yep. and the people without kids are going to Miami. Yes. Or there's, the people who love the beaches, There's a couple people too. who with kids who are going to Miami. Yeah, people who yeah. really love the beach are going to Miami. They can't, there's no way they can be inland. If you've lived in California on the beach your whole life, there's no fucking way you're moving inland. I'll tell you this. So I was just in Miami a couple weeks ago for the national championship, um, where Ohio State got beat by COVID. It's dope down there. <laughs> by China. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. However, look, Miami for the last 20 years has been the same, where you're in a high-rise or your 30 minutes off yeah, of like those Miami Beach, South Infinite Miami. turquoise. You see the turquoise plexiglass condo buildings. Yeah, like, Jesus yeah, 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 yeah. Turquoise yeah. is expensive, man. They it's expensive, it. one. But two, you're nowhere near the beach there. Mm-hmm. And everybody thinks it's the same as L.A., where, where you're like, oh, man, I'm only like 10 miles from the beach. I'll no, go like all the time. you're 45 minutes from the yeah. beach. Yes, bitch. yeah. And, and the traffic and everything else, yeah. and it's it's a whole day or a weekend. you got to plan out your life. Some of those neighborhoods that are down on the beach are like private gated neighborhoods too you can't even get in there to get on the beach sure yeah but uh, here's the thing though some of those uh off the beaten path or maybe 20 30 minutes away residential neighborhoods out there are very nice oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's great and so i know a couple a couple people from la who have families who are like all right i for 2.2 million dollars i'm living in schittsville in west hollywood with the homeless (laughs) problem getting like demonstrably worse after it's gotten worse for about five years, crime getting worse. Right. Or I can go to Miami where neither of those things are happening. And, you know, for that amount of money, you could have a mansion. Sure. And, 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 and yeah. let's real quick. Miami real estate is shooting through the roof yeah, right now. Because, I mean, what's going on in Austin and Nashville are attracting a lot of attention right now. A lot of migrants. What's going on in Miami, I think, has been unprecedented in in the history of, of modern America. And I, I'm a little biased because I'm in the technology world, the startup world and that that community particularly is flocking to Miami in a really interesting way right now. But something spe- something very interesting is happening out there. Yeah. Well, it's, it, I think it is children, though, for real. Um, because there isn't that many people who are moving to Miami who have children. Yeah, but if a couple is, of people start doing it, then that, that uh, barrier gets There's impossible. more than you think. There's more than you think because the other thing is the... In California, in Southern California, the suburb suburbs, they're not half an hour away. They're an hour away, right? right, right. So <clears throat> you can go 20. My best friend from law school, he was a Miami guy originally, but he mm-hmm. went back to Miami after after school. He lives Aventura, 30 minutes up, and but it doesn't feel like you're that far away from South Beach. He gets down right. there like, every day, and it's, it's pretty... Uh, uh, that the little, traffic is pretty gnarly. I'm sure, but... Yeah, but it's not L.A. traffic. I mean, if you're used to that shit. People moving from L.A. to to Miami, at least for the first couple years, are not going to feel the way about traffic that they have. I'm sure it'll catch up to them at some point. The infrastructure won't be able to keep up with that migration. Sure, much like the real estate prices are catching up, and, you know, they're they're closing the gap, and I'm I'm sure. um, But... I think it's a quality of life thing. You've got all these people, everyone's trying to spend and all the, you know, all the bitter, resentful San Francisco people and the libs who out there who don't, who want to kind of st- st- thumb their nose at what's going on with Miami because they're like, well, fuck you. Like our progressive wonderland is doing so well. You're just going there because you want lower taxes. And it's like, Taxes have been way higher in California for a long time now. Okay, yep. if all these people just they these people made their money a long time ago, a lot of them. If they just wanted lower taxes, they would have left a few years ago. Okay, they're leaving because it's quality of life issue beyond the taxes, and that's something we're seeing. And you're seeing the more purple, purple areas called yeah. Austin, Nashville, and Miami are like a little more cosmopolitan, a little more progressive, but still under kind of generally more traditional conservative regimes and culture. And those seem to be the places that everyone's flocking to. Weird. Weird how that works, <laughs> isn't it? Well, it's, we had, it's, well you it's, and I had it's because it's because when it's cold outside, 
you put a fucking jacket on and when it's hot outside you take your jacket off right, yeah, right. sometimes conservatism works when there's a un, was there, there's an imbalance on the left side and vice versa that is how it goddamn works right yeah. so this idea that you might be as an individual beholden to the left or right that means half the time you're going to be wrong why not be beholden to the fucking truth and that way when it's time for right or it's time for left you can make that fucking reasonable decision without attaching your emotions to it god fucking damn it i agree but we're not there everybody's picked a side and that's it like i don't know too many people in the middle who are willing to have open thoughts and conversations and all that other shit um we had kevin sorbo on the show which is what i was uh, about mm -hmm. to say a second ago um, now, he said California state taxes are moving to 16.5. No, that's something that's been spoken about, but it hasn't been passed yet. Oh, so it's but not it, implemented. It, 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 I'm 99% sure it's not yet been implemented. I don't, I don't think it's been implemented. There are a handful of things that are... Is it still like, 13? Uh, well, it was 13.9. 13. It's, 13. 13. okay. it's still 13. And that's the whole thing is I remember when it was 9, right? Mm. And then they moved it up to 13 because there was such a budget imbalance. Right. And, <clears> and I'm like, okay... Theoretically, they I'm I could live with them doing this temporarily, and then as soon as they've got the budget under control, which they did actually for a minute or two earlier, you know, four or five years ago, um, was that world, Moonbeam was still in office then, right? Yeah, and he was had a, more of a mixed record, and this is a point that I'm going to get to. Is I don't mm. think it's necessarily about <clears throat> two sides; it's about how far on the, on one side you are. Because Eric Garcetti, from mayor of Los Angeles, is a perfect example of this. The guy got uh, a lot, and I'll, I'll admit. Because if you were an early 30s enterprising professional in Los Angeles and you wanted to network well, you did an Eric Garcetti fundraiser in 2013. Yeah, there was we, a lot of people lot of going those. to those things. We yeah. fucking did those, and it was great networking. And he seemed like a pretty mm. rational, moderate guy that was friendly with the startup world. He seemed like a gangster, like an Italian gangster from the old school. Sure. Where he When you like, met him, yeah. you were like, yeah. oh, well, shit. Eh, this I, guy sure. could do some shady I, shit and get kinda, some things I kinda done. I kind of felt the same about Bloomberg when he came to New York, too. Even though he has started trending toward the left a little bit, he still seemed like a pretty but, but reasonable here's, guy. Here's the thing. We all know, and you know, stuff, stuff that me, you, me and you guys have talked about a lot, is this strange phenomenon of the past, let's call it five to seven years, of the, 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 uh, the left going in just aggressively, radically to the left, mm. to an extent no, <clears throat> even an Eric Garcetti in 2013 would never have contemplated. And because, mm. as he's shown himself, and why I regret and will voc vocally regret ever having supported him, is because he's shown himself to be such a craven opportunist that if he sees the opportunities on his side shifting the, the the zeitgeist of the left shifting there he's going to go there and right. that's what he's done well that's that's nothing new on and and either side of the but world, it's it's right? new in how the ideas that i mean now, hillary clinton was staunchly anti-marriage equality until 2013 yeah. when she and obama's hands got forced by joe biden being a loud mouth sure. on fucking sun meet the press on sunday or whatever the fuck it was sure right? but what you're seeing on the left have the, from the great awakening as some people have phrased it which i, actually I like that i've not heard that actually. Oh, you uh, haven't heard oh no. You got okay. That makes me want to die. Matt, that phrase. Matt name this it. episode the Great Awakening. <laughs> That's great. I'll, well, I'll no. give that one to you. I haven't heard and that. Another and a guy who's another interesting example of this of a classically left wing writer named Matt Iglesias, mm. who then you have seen in real time as the left went too far, and he has reluctantly acknowledged that he left the New York Times. He left Vox where he was one of the principals. Yeah. And he, you've seen him speak out against radical leftism recently. You could say, wow. They're too far left for Matt Iglesias. Like, this is crazy. So, like, you're see, you see... He was supposed you, to... He was on the show, by the way. Oh, he was, was he? he yeah. We were about to have him on the show, and he had a power outage, and we just have it rebooked. Well, He's gonna be on. here's the story. Mm, that's what he said. <laughs> we started getting into it about his book, because he, he wrote a book called, like, A Billion People, right? He yeah. wanted a billion people to live in the United States. I did not think that was a good idea. I think we're good at 3.30 right now. We can't we even handle this shit. Plate, Clearly, yeah. exactly. yes, we have enough on our plate. And I was like, hey, man, why the fuck would you want to do this? Because everybody will be living in high rises or things. You don't have a yard. You won't have anything. Sure. Blah, 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 blah. And uh, he was like, hey, man, my Internet's not doing so well. We're about 15 minutes into the interview. and then Really? Yep. Never heard back. OK, from. so his trajectory has been super interesting. He was back before the left started drifting in this direction in the 2000s. Andrew Sullivan kind of named an award after Iglesias of someone who was moderate and could admit to being wrong and like was balanced. Great. Yeah. Then as the left starts to drift, he starts to drift. He joins Vox, which once again was a pretty middle of the road 
uh, uh, publication. It late used to be, yeah, yeah, 2000s, yeah. Mm-hmm. early 2010s, yeah. and then mm-hmm. just becomes fucking woke, woke newsletter. Yes. And then, you know, maybe 2015, 16, Iglesias is one of those, like, shut up, idiots. This is just a bunch of kids on college campuses. Stop complaining about this stuff. And then, like, over time, you kind of see him, like, start to wise up to it all. And then he really wised up in 2020 and he started speaking out mm-hmm. against some stuff around mm-hmm. the, 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 the summer protests. And he's like, wow, I'll admit some of what some of the the concerns about radical leftism in newsrooms that I had dismissed, I might have been wrong about. And within two months of two or three months of that, he's out at Vox. OK, he's on, interesting. He so this was when we when he was on here, it was right before all that stuff happened. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, we, we had asked him, we were like, hey, man, so with Vox, right? It's kind of like a BuzzFeed. There's a lot of people that don't like Vox. And he was shocked. He was like, really? He was like, I didn't, I've never heard anybody that doesn't like Vox. And I was like, all right, cool. There's a lot. And then we got into the book and everything else. And then magically his internet cut out mm-hmm. and we never heard back from him again. But this was also before all the events that you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So okay. this was right around, you know. I don't remember when it was. March, April of Maybe, uh, yeah. 2020. It was a yeah. while back. Sure. Yeah. Before and, the protests. Yeah. yeah. And now mm-hmm. if you read, he went to Substack, doing very well on Substack. What is Substack? So Substack is an independent publishing platform that some of the, that you can accept Build audience, accept subscriptions, build your, you know, essentially your own publishing business individually off of. And recently it has been the soft landing or the oasis for all of the writer, mainstream writers who no longer feel comfortable at their or getting booted out of their out of their uh, uh, their mainstream publications. And this yeah. goes from everyone like a Barry Weiss at the New York Times, Andrew Sullivan at the New York Magazine, to Glenn Greenwald, who was at the intercept of all Greenwald places. started all this shit. He, yes. didn't, he didn't start it. Gre- but he was, say, he's no, one of the founding fathers of this movement. Sullivan has uh, left for Substack first, but you got to give it up to Greenwald. Well, I don't mean a, Substack. I just mean in general the fucking... He's been great. The journalists calling out other journalists who aren't journalists. Mm-hmm. There's fucking click, click machines. Yeah. Uh, Greenwald's one of the first. I mean, you know who Glenn Greenwald is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Presumably, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Um, which is, look, all of this is why we wanted to have you on the show today. Dan and I have bitched about this for months and months and months in this show. Right? I've been bitching about it since I was born. Yeah, well, you, you have. No, I think better. I, not, I think Walter Cronkite is the cause of all of this shit. Well, <laughs> yes, Dan does. But, but well, if, there's a couple of bad players, right? That o- over the years that have caused this situation that we're in right now. One of them is Richard Nixon and Atwater. His, his, his chief campaign manager, Atwater, right. who developed the Southern strategy, which is, well, we can't say the N-word anymore, so let's call white people hardworking Americans and let the presumption be that nobody else works hard. Right. That's all him, the Southern Christian bullshit. Like, the South wasn't about all that shit, politically speaking, before Nixon got involved, right? Nixon's one of them. Cronkite going on record as a journalist with an opinion about something that was going on mm-hmm. fucking ruined journalism forever. And then the next two assholes are Newt Gingrich, Right. Total piece of fucking shit. Human being. It, this country, if he had never existed, would be far better off. Newt Gingrich. And uh, who is that other fucker? Uh, the guy that uh, that coined the phrase death tax and all that shit. He's like a Republican strategist. You uh, can look Frank at Frank Luntz. Frank Luntz. Yeah. yeah okay. Those two guys, him, Frank Luntz and Newt Gingrich in the fucking uh, 90s and early 2000s are the next ones. And then uh, from there on, it's just been like cascading downhill. Everybody, there have been a couple of people who have tried to resist the avalanche, but have been taken down with it, I guess. Not that that's an excuse. They're cunts too. Fuck them. But uh, the only person that really didn't, the only two people that really didn't buy in, I'll say three, because I'll add Bernie into that. He couldn't be bought by anybody. I'll give him that. Bernie Sanders? Bernie Sanders could not be bought. He was a hypocrite about a lot of stuff. Like when, he, when it was time to give his employees $15 an hour, he was like, nah, we got to fire these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cunt, just yeah. like everybody else. Uh, but Tulsi Gabbard, you see what happens when somebody is legit? She's the best. They look around and see this shit like, fuck this, I'm leaving. And frankly, I spoke tr- to her the other day, yeah. by the way. So and she wants to come on yeah. the show. Oh, you guys versa. got it. Yeah. yeah, I think she's the most interesting. Like, I mean, she's barely mainstream. I think she's the most interesting mainstream politician around right now. She just yeah. started a podcast, and uh, I chatted with her the other day. She'd be down to come on, obviously. And um, yeah, yeah. Uh, she's interesting. But uh, again, the reason why we want to have you on the show today is Dan and I keep bitching about uh, these social media platforms that we're stuck with, kind of right. Mm-hmm. The Twitter, the Facebook, Instagram, um, you know, nobody talks about WhatsApp really anymore or uh, Snapchat or anything like that. Uh, nobody above 27. Right, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What is the next thing? So when Trump got removed from all of this stuff, 
we're trying to figure it out what the next thing is because i mean dude dan and i we've had some shows with shit we had a feed bumped off of uh, facebook because we were talking about just privacy and how to turn off the the, the data on your, yeah, your ex- app. external data collection so mm-hmm. okay. do, you know, do you know how to turn that off no yeah pull up your facebook and i'll do it for you so okay. we did it live on air on thursday and we were using this app called restream which we use for all of the shows yep. and it gets uh one feed all these cameras get get fed out to all these social media platforms um youtube facebook twitch all that other stuff as we were talking about how to turn off the the data on your phone so that facebook's not tracking you or whatever which is on there it's on their app it's not like we're telling you anything that you you don't know but uh uh, they cut the feed, and then this morning we got a, an email saying, hey, uh, Facebook is no longer allowing you to stream videos on Facebook or whatever. Like, it was a normal episode. We were talking about the storm pipes bursting and nothing crazy. I mean, just, sure. usually it's Coke and strippers on this show, but it wasn't. Um, so we keep talking about what is the next platform. Uh, a lot of people, Tim Dillon and those guys, talking about Clubhouse. Uh, I joined Clubhouse. Uh, Dan and I have been talking about stereo. Well, a lot of people. Stereo is one of them. Yeah, a lot of people who talk for a living are talking about Clubhouse because that's what it is, right? Yeah. So people. Same with stereo. Like journalists who are Twitter warriors are going over there and listening to shit, but I doubt the people that aren't familiar with being in front of camera are doing a lot of talking. I would guess, like, professor, a lot of a lot of scientists, a lot of mathematicians, professors and stuff, a lot of marketing people over there, and a fuck ton of on-camera journalists are over there as well. Yeah, so explain the hype behind Clubhouse and what it is because you were one of the first people in it. Um, obviously you've been on the show before and, uh, I follow you. So I've seen your tweets and your messages about clubhouse. And then Tim Dillon is one of my favorites. So like, obviously, you know, he was like, Oh, you gotta get on clubhouse. It's dope. Yeah. What is it? Okay. Um, it's, it's essentially, let's call it a social audio app. So imagine if Twitter, instead of these, everyone just typing at each other, it was, it was, uh, you know, um, kind of confined conversation. So someone will start a room. The room can then fill up with users who are in the audience. The, the uh, uh, moderator of the room can then invite people up and essentially people just start talking and can discuss essentially any, any topic. To any, each other? <clears throat> to, to each other, yes. So it's almost like these little digital auditoriums with speakers, but it's in, it fully interactive where at any point anyone can raise their hand, come and, you know, obviously the moderator gets to decide who. Um, but And these things uh, have very much take on a life of their own. And for instance, uh, last Saturday, uh, and, and as, as long as their moderator's up on stage, the chat continues to go until right. the, the originator turns it off. And Elon Musk is on there a ton. Yeah, he's yeah. on there. Yeah. So to back, that's, that's what a description of what it is. To back mm-hmm. up a little bit and give you the context that I think will show you why it's interesting and why everyone from Tim to a lot of other people, why I think it is one of the reasons that I've been a proponent of it as I think it's sucking uh, out some of the energy and so it's, it's kneecapping the, ger- the mainstream media's power on Twitter. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Okay. okay. So, um, cause it's easier to, to listen than read. Well, no, that's well, why, that's why wanna, Audible no, exists. You want to know why? You yeah. want to know why? Cause on Clubhouse, you can't repost, retweet or screenshot someone and send your digital attack dogs yeah. against them. Yeah. You have to speak. And there's no, there's no rating system. So Got when I, fir- it. when okay. I, fir- when I first saw Clubhouse, I was like, what if somebody, what if what if somebody comes into a room and you're a moderator and it's the same person gets booted out of different rooms repeatedly? Should there be a strike on them? The answer is no, because if you start allowing that, then the mob will show up and start using that mechanism to fuck people out of their. And so that place. okay, so so the I'll tell you about a couple of the mm-hmm. early exam. You know what's going on with that because mm-hmm. it's going to happen and it needs to be mm-hmm. addressed, right? So um, there is a, a venture capital firm called Andreessen Horowitz. If it's not the number the most successful venture capital firm in you know recent history. It's top five, right? Um, and they've, you know, Mark Andrews, and he was one of the uh, guys behind Netscape. And, you know, this is a one particular venture capital firm that's had a bit of an acrimonious relationship with the tech media and the mainstream media. Because you got not, Sequoia up there. Sequoia. Yeah, um, but the, Sequoia plays by the rules. And by rules, I mean... They're quiet. They're rich enough to set the rules and stay off the stage. Yeah, you they're quiet. I mean? Sequoia, yeah. okay, so Sequoia is quiet. Founders Fund, which is Peter Thiel and a guy named Mike Solana, who's super interesting, who you guys might not be following yet, but I think Is it should. Weinstein in that? Too, or the Weinstein both, is maybe Teal Capital. And oh, that's right. Which yeah. Weinstein? I think that's important Eric. to okay. Eric, yeah. or it's his important brother. to say that for the audience nice. first. But yeah, Brett's not gonna <laughs> not. No, he's no giving him a job. At a he's talking okay. about Harvey. He's a good dude though. He's yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I got, got, got so, it. Just for the audience, we're not talking about Harvey. Okay, good. for sure. Good. So Andrews and Horowitz, uh, early like literally right after COVID happens, there's a release in a uh, 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 press release in the tech press that Andrews and Horowitz funds this new app called Clubhouse. Uh, at a at pre-launch, 
$10 million investment, $100, $100 million valuation, and it let the founders take like a million dollars each off the table. And what that means is that everyone was off after this deal. So the, the founders are like, all right, who wants this deal? You're letting us take a million dollars off the table. Yeah. Right? And like, yeah. we're trying to make a billion dollars. So don't worry. We're not just going to get greedy and get lazy just because we got a million dollars. This sure. just means that we can live for the next few years. Mm. Well, so yeah, that happens. Yeah, really well. Right. Yeah. So that happens. Yeah, so that's, about, that's a common to a 10 on 10. It, it, or a 10 on 100 is a pretty common startup kind of situation, but, but yeah. not with a million payout to all the founders. Right. No. Well, usually it, usually that 10 is meant to be, uh, and it's <laughs> it's operating income over the next five, three to five years, and you get one million now to start, and then if you hit certain markers, you get the next four or whatever the fuck it is. Totally, right? totally. But it definitely, it's it, it's it shows that there is definitely high demand for this deal, Correct. Yeah. And, and the founders leverage that. But, but don't sometimes a lot of these VCs do that intentionally to pump it up so they can fucking sell it and get the fuck sometimes, out? Sometimes, but, and that's part... And, 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 and it's and, not and, illegal to do that, It's by the way. not, and I'm gonna, I would not use the term pump, and I'm gonna tell you in a minute why injuries and was what they're doing with Clubhouse. It's not pumping, but it's I don't adding think that's so much value. Yeah, yeah. It, what they're doing right now with Clubhouse so what they've done is going to be studied in business schools for decades. It is brilliant. So uh, we hear that Andreessen and Horowitz, and these are these are not guys who got to be where they are, but being dumb. We're like, why is 10 million? But this is pre-launch. Usually you get yeah. this 10 million after you get some traction, yeah. launch, whatever. Um, so and then it, it's released, and it seems to be this you know audio social media platform where people can chat with each other. Okay, great. Um, there's one of the guys at Andreessen and Horowitz. Uh, his name's Nate Jones. He's on Twitter. He's you know. He's got some strong views on society. I, I always like them. I followed him. I was commenting on some stuff. He followed me back. We chit chat here and there. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not, he's a strong. He has strong views. I have strong views. We didn't always agree, but it was always respectful. And at one point, you know, we get into it about something, and then he's like, and then he kind of starts talking about. See, this is the problem with Twitter. It's why it's making everyone crazy and fight with each other. And he's like, that's why Clubhouse is going to change the world. I'm like, huh? What? Yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah. social media. He's like, no. He's like. The reason social media is making everyone crazy is because it's people typing at each other. So there's type, 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 and they're yelling, and there's no, you don't hear anyone's voice or see them, so there's no humanity. And she was like, introducing voice is what's going to humanize and uh, humanize social media interactions and make everything you know, uh, healthier. And mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, you know, I guess, I guess. Yeah. Um, he's like, he gives me an invite. And this is early, this is in June. Um, so I, I probably was, I don't know, one of the first 10,000 people on the platform. And I go on, or maybe 50, who knows. Um, I go on, and I'm like, all right, this is interesting. I can see you can just literally pop on at any time and, and have a conversation with some people. But there's not that many people on the platform at that point, so it's not that interesting. The most interesting thing that was happening is Mark Andreessen's par partner, Ben Horowitz, Andreessen Horowitz, his wife, Felicia, is a very well-networked person. She's friends with Oprah. She's friends with all these celebrities and yada, yada. And every Saturday night, she'd host, like, a digital dinner party. And this was when COVID was rampant and no one was leaving their house. And, like, that was cool because she'd get all her celebrities friends and she'd have an interesting speaker and like, you okay. can't see her correct so you it's just her, her it's just her speaking no. kind of like a podcast kind of like a podcast she initiates the room she's up on stage she invites you know oprah or this person or that person and here's the stage and she gets to control it and then there's an audience and the audience is listening to the chat and like this is cool but what, what I, and I, I was thinking how would i use it for my own content and i couldn't quite figure it out then towards the, the fall, they, they've let more people on the platform. They've started, the room start to take shape. It's like, okay, here's one about digital marketing. Okay, here's one about venture capital. It's like, well, there's some interesting chats here. Mm -hmm. Then they give everyone, uh, uh, around October, November, they give everyone 20 invites. Because it's invite only. They're like, but everyone who's on it now, you get 20 invites. So right. that obviously exponentially expands the, mm -hmm. the user base right there. I'm like, okay, <clears throat> wait, now this is interesting. Because it's like a lot a lot more stuff starts happening. More celebrities start popping up. It's like fun stuff. Like last week it was like Vanilla Ice came on and someone has the Vanilla Ice welcome party. And all of a sudden I'm up on stage talking, Vanilla Ice follows me on fucking Clubhouse, right? It's like, oh, okay, this happens. Like sure. every, every time a celebrity joins, there's a, a kind of a welcome party and it had their right and they go raw it's like the old howard stern show where you get these celebrities and they open up more than they open up on anything else because they don't feel like it's um they don't feel like it's an there's a big difference between uh having a camera pointed at you and having your phone in your hand yeah yeah so what, what are you talking through i mean your phone so, so just your phone yeah. so what do you put yeah. on speaker uh, no, you pop the app open and it has the speaker fun function automatically. Yeah. Gotcha. And, and the reason I ask is, so I, I got invited to this a few weeks ago, right? Mm -hmm. And I got in there and I was kind of the same as you, where I was like, what the fuck's going on? Um, I couldn't figure it out. And then there was different like groups and chats and whatever. And I was like, fuck, 
I don't know these people. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, I, it, to me, not knowing what it was, it, it felt uh, intrusive for me to go into somebody else's room and be like, oh, shit. No, dude, that's what it's for. I, I understand that now, but then I did not. Sure. Um, and I think that's how all of these social media apps start. And we had talked about this with Parler and everything mm -hmm. else. It's going to take time for this to, to have a shape and, and understand what it is, right? Sure. Well, I don't know. I think I Although know it's starting. I think I know exactly what, what it is right now, right? I mean, it's, it is what you said it is. It's, it's a humanization of the process. So there's a number. Look, there's going to be uh, 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 pitfalls as well. For one, sure. of, one of them is, is content moderation because regardless of how f you feel personally about liberty and anti-safetyism and all this stuff, if somebody is jumping into, like, let's say there's one user that's just joining every possible group, and anytime a fucking chat starts, they get in there and raise their hand and eventually get let on and just yell the N-word repeatedly. Mm -hmm. That person has to be dealt with somehow because sure. it's just annoying, right? It's not about safety or anything. It's just like we want our platform. Money's the to, waters. Right. We want our platform to work correctly. We want our roads to work correctly. So I'm going to fucking repave it every couple of years. This is the way it is. The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time and <laughs> all that stuff. So that I can see some pitfalls coming, but what it is is reintroducing that. You, you've read The Coddling of the American Mind, right? Certain sections. Yeah, so, so one of the things they talk about is screen usage. Now, there's a, co there's a correlation between uh, elevated screen use, particularly for teenage people, and suicide, mostly with women, actually, more so than men. Now, there's no... People can't figure out why that is, whether it's a combination of multiple factors like the blue light fucking your eyeballs and your brain up, or if it's the constant, uh, 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 the same thing that's been going on in fitness and women's magazines for years, this impossible standard of beauty or whatever the fuck, or if it's the dehumanization of the conversation. They also found, when researching this, that the people that were more inclined to be introverts were going to do that either way because they avoid that social interaction either way. So the point wasn't that it was the social interaction point. The point is that this person is just that way, right? Yeah. There's a medium between dehumanized texting and having a camera facing you and all of your flaws being exposed because people don't think about that until they think about it. You know what I mean? And then when you think about it, you can't fucking stop thinking about it for a lot of these people. But just your voice is a whole different story. I and think your friend's right. I, and yeah. so do I. And here's the other part about it, because we, we just did a show yesterday about uh, the Richard Marx thing that I, I did with Richard Marx, which is fucking hilarious, right? Beyond. But the thing is, you have, I don't know, I'm looking at Anybody my, that takes themselves that seriously needs to be fucked with. Well, here's yeah. the other part you know what about I mean? it. That's just, it's not about being a dick to the dude. It's just like, come on, but, man. But his, his yeah. fans jump in, our fans jump in, and all the other shit, right? But it's, it's just blank people, you know? And you're looking yeah. at him, and you pull it up, and you're like, all right, great. Uh, this guy, Kerry Quite Contrary, whoever the fuck that is, <laughs> has 1,029 followers. And you're, like, I'm just reading this, again, a total random, just looking at it. And then their, their bio says, sarcasm and wit fan, <sighs> T1D, harm reduction, cannabis advocate, uh, and then gift sniper. So just a, just a gift sniper. I don't know who this is. It's a picture of a woman on a broom from uh, 1928. It's all in black and white. That's their thing, right? That's the problem with Twitter is sometimes you don't even know if these are real fucking people, mm -hmm. like whether it's a bot or somebody else. If it's somebody's voice and you're able to call them out and physically talk to them. So yeah. hypothetical. These, Ru these Russian bots aren't going to be able to be like, uh, like speaking in some really poor American accent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, Rick, uh, Richard, <laughs> Richard, man. Uh, Dick Marks. Man, I, I saw you talking it's a guy raw. Sounds it's, bullshit. It's a guy with a Slavic accent, but he's saying he's from fucking Southern Mississippi. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Man, your aunt gave him a beach. <laughs> like that holds people more accountable yeah. where you can hear their voice. Talk to them and say, great. When was this? Who told you this story? Why? Blah, 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 blah. Well, you can also identify somebody based on their voice. There are yes. very sensitive instruments that yes. the government can use. Look, I don't know what the fuck you guys know about all this stuff. Not you, but the audience. Sure. But uh, satellites can look at your gait, the way you walk, and mm -hmm. identify you separately from different people that are walking around you. So if you think there's any privacy left on this earth, you're out of your fucking mind. Lock oh, yourself yeah, in a yeah. basement somewhere, yeah. masturbate, and hope God's not watching. That's all you can do at this point. Now, I like to be watched. 
And that's your so kink. So I, I go outside. It's your kink, yeah. I make a bunch of weird uh, uh, searches about, like, how to buy propane tanks and fucking, you know, fertilizer. And then I go outside because I know the satellite's on me. I just pound off right in front of them. There's 60 dudes in an NSA fucking lab somewhere watching me pound off. Yeah, I like which it. is great. Which you, which you like it. Yeah. Um, that's why they took the job. That's uh, definitely why they took the job. Ex- nobody takes one of those jobs if they're not a voyeur, right? Exactly. You have Come to Come on. You have to be. Um, so Clubhouse... Final verdict here before we get to the sponsors, and then I'm going to ask you about Trump's platform and everything else, mm-hmm. right? Or where he's going to go. Yeah, D- does this get ruined like every other fucking app? Because this is the this is the cool kid right now, right? Everybody's yeah. talking about it. Fuck, even I got into it. I don't even know what the fuck it is. Yeah. I, I'm, but I'm also terrible at tech. Sure. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm great at talking to a gajillion people. Tech That's wise, why this is my. You might warm up to this soon enough. Well, maybe, right? Yeah. Um, but tech wise, like shit, man. I. I can barely control a fucking Instagram or a goddamn Twitter account. Richard Marks, Dick Marks might have me banned. I don't know what's <laughs> going to happen. Um, but uh, this is interesting, but does it get ruined just like every other thing else because of outside money, advertising, um, people that's, from the ev- left? Everyone is, is speculating on that, right? Mm-hmm. Because right now, 8 million users, a good share of that are cultural and professional elites. Um, so everyone's thinking, well, how is this going to get too cluttered when too many people are on? It's the special, you know, time right now when like there's just so many interesting people who just any time because of the day. it's small though. Eight million is not that small though. I'm like, it, but it is for everything else. Sure, sure. But I'm like, dude. I mean, it's kind of wild. Like at any moment of the day that I can pop the potential of three to five options to pop into rooms of like industry experts discussing like the relevant topics, I mean, is pretty astonishing. And it's like, does that go away? And I, as of, it's been too, okay, first of all, because once you get on one of these rooms, you just stay there and everyone's talking, the average session time per user on this thing blows away anything that's ever happened on the internet by far, it's not even close because mm-hmm. like this, everyone just stays on. Right. Um, so I, I think it would be, you'd, I think it's hard to bet against it right now. It's hard to bet against it. Um, and I just, because I think you guys, it was super relevant to the stuff we talk about. It's interesting. I can already see this sucking some of the wind out of the traditional media on Twitter for a variety of reasons. The Twitter hit piece, the New York Times hit pieces are already coming out and they're falling flat because you can't, like Taylor Lorenz tried right. to do a hit piece the other day and she sounded ridiculous. But, but, Be- the, but the New York Times is also falling flat. So Sure. It, but but they're, okay, they're this part so of the So the LA Times, by the way, for sale right now. Yeah, yeah, correct. As of today. Yep. Again. Yeah, yeah, again. Joke. Yeah, again. Done CNN's that. for sale. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because yeah, yeah. it's a, it's, that's a failed industry. Yeah. It's, and, it's done. And the Trump, Trump kept, it was, circ- they were circling the drain in 2016. Then Trump right. came along, kept yeah. him afloat. And so the time. So Trump's of- not, tr- Trump's not going to try to do some kind of new traditional media because that would be insane. Ah. Like if, no, no, no. Wait. If you come in at the end of railroad popularity, <laughs> where, tr- where fucking transfer trucks are starting to become a thing and you start a new railroad, you're a fucking idiot. Yes. You I, start a truck company, bitch. I agree. So well, what Trump has got to do is something like that. But does he have anyone in his orbit that is that technologically capable who's going to be able to figure it out? Which Maybe we'll get to Peter right Thiel after probably. the sponsors. Yeah. Teal, I, we'll possibly. talk about Teal in a minute. If, he, yeah. if he'll do it at this point, I don't know. I, he's, uh, I can't get into why, uh, you know, mm. how I know this, but Teal is arms just, and, and he's yeah. not that involved with Trump at this point. Everybody is arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But anyways. Uh, including ghostbed.com forward slash shrinking bros. Uh, the best mattress on the planet. Nah, they'll sell Trump a bed. 40 for, <laughs> yes, they'll do, they'll do all of it. Like, they don't give a shit. They don't discriminate. That's why we love them. They don't give a shit what party you're on uh, or, or if you're having sex with an entire party. They don't care. Shit. When we did the Super Bowl show, we had 950 pounds worth of humans on there. Right. I had an adjustable And it was only base. three people, too. Yes. So clearly, you're ready to go if you want to get a fucking group orgy going on. 40% off if you order the bundle package, which is the adjustable base and the mattress right now. You can also couple the pillows and sheets on that bitch. And you're good to go, especially if you get the 36-month page-to-go program and no interest there. You can blend both of those deals together and have a huge deal, which is a whole new bedroom set for essentially 35 bucks a month. It's the best on the planet. I lost my the fucking... Uh, not even gonna say a hurricane anymore because it's I'm not I'm not there. I moved to Texas. So I was like, oh no, no more hurricanes. I'm in Central Texas instead. Pipes bursting. So uh, the natural disasters are following me. I'm gonna need a new fucking ghost bed. 
I can't live without these goddamn things, and you won't either. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and get yours. You'll understand what I am talking about. And again, use the 36 month page to go program. No interest there. Couple that together and then just type in the promo code drinking bros at checkout. You're good to go. Next up, we've got Cardomax, uh, C A R D O M A X dot com. Energy intensifier, man. This is tasty little tin pouch here. Boom. Rip it open and squeeze it in any liquid available and you're good to go. Uh, this is it right here, kids. Pour it in whatever and uh, you're ready to punch a mountain, a baby, or a mountain lion baby. Uh, whatever you choose, you can do that. Squeeze it in anything, you're good to go. Look, there's no carbs, no sugars, no nothing in this. And uh, that's it. I don't want to say that it lasts longer than five hours, but it does. It does. Uh, go to C A R D O M A X. Uh, dot com. Sean Matson's company, yeah. Navy SEAL. He's been on the show numerous times. He's about um, to do a bomb run, bomb suit run. Yeah, which is dumb. Yeah, dumb. never. Sean, I love you, but he's gonna no. he's gonna get all hyped up There's on the fucking Cardo Max. No point. Doing and it's cool. That. Use the promo code DB there, and it's Bogo. Buy one get one. Brand new company. Uh, then you can see if you really fucking like them. They're great. Uh, here's the bag of it right here. Uh, we love Sean Matson and those guys. Uh, it's a veteran owned company. It's great. Uh, go to cardomax.com today. Promo code DB. It's a BOGO on everything in the store. Buy one, get one there. And you are good to go. Last but not least, uh, we've got Roman, dude. Go to getroman.com forward slash drinking bros. Limited time, kids. $35 off your first month of ED treatments. Uh, look, I know you, you don't have a erectile dysfunction. You might. Not as far as I can tell. Are you sure? Uh, we'll give it a sh- we'll check. We'll pull the electric give, tonight. Give Giorgio some X, X's numbers and then we'll call them <laughs> live on air. We'll see how your boner's working. Or oh, if, you, if you just I, want a party boner. I had a good idea. The, well, what I think is a good idea, which is probably fucking <laughs> stupid. But I, what, what if there was a Carfax report for your dick and vagina? <laughs> Show me the Carfax. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see what, where is, where the did prob- the rubber meet the road there the, on that the, dick? The problem is that it's mob mentality, right? Yeah. Like you're allowing a mob. For me, it would be a mob. You've only had sex twice in your life, I think, with those two kids. Right? Yeah, 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 obviously. Yeah, obviously. That's, that's a thousand. It. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah. for me, it would be a mob. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. So, but that that uh, if you just piss somebody off, they give you a bad rating. Yeah, that that's not that's the only part of it that would not work. Do you want a boner rating? Is that what you want? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess you could do plenty of fish, but for dicks. Okay. Or rate my poo. Remember that site? Oh yeah, wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glad I don't. Yeah, oh, Rate you my remember poo. Rate My Poo? It was, it was, nice. ju- it was just dumps, pictures of dumps, and, dumps. It was, and it was like Hot or Not, or Plenty, or I, I don't know what Plenty, plenty of Fish, fish. was. No, it was just Hot, hot or Not. Hot or Not is the one where you chose a number, one to ten. Right? Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, Giorgio, this, do you know? Because it's, a ra- Rate My Poo is just your shit. Um, uh, rate My Poo is probably still a thing. Yeah. All right, not to blow your guys' mind, but this was actually an app, and it was called Lulu. And women, it was basically the Yelp of dudes' dick on college campuses, and girls could rate that, uh, your body, how good you were in bed, things you did. Uh, it was amazing for a while. As a guy, you were allowed to see your reviews, but uh, you couldn't write reviews, and only girls could send them. Ah, yeah, I think I remember this. Technology. I I, yeah, that's a really good idea. Technology is there. I, I would get involved in that. Yeah. I'll, I'll invest in that. That yeah. didn't, didn't take off. Yeah. More. Can't either. Stonks. Uh, IPO that. Stonks. Thing. But <laughs> if, uh, if, if you, look, if you want a party boner, if you got erectile dysfunction, uh, go to getroman.com slash drinking bros to get started. That is getroman.com slash drinking bros. Free two day shipping. Uh, you're good to go. You talk with an online doctor. You don't have to fucking meet your doctor in real life. It's great. It's go to getroman.com forward slash drinking bros today. Uh, 35, 35 bucks off is a lot right now. Uh, your first month. Uh, so go there, get it, learn it, live it, love it. Shows up in a discreet package. You're ready to fucking party. All right. Uh, the, the question on everybody's mind is uh, is Trump. What he's going to do. Media is collapsing um, right now as of the last 10 days. And I'm just going to block out the last 10 days. Um, because, uh, fuck, I hate Twitter so much. But um, I, you read these stories on Twitter. The first one was Lou Dobbs, right? So Lou Dobbs gets fired on a Friday. Everybody celebrates. Fuck Lou Dobbs. Fuck Fox. Everybody, ah, they're going down. I replied to somebody that was pretty famous and I said, look, you shouldn't be celebrating Lou Dobbs. This just means it's the rest of everybody that's going down that's got a big salary. Uh, That woman from CNN was yesterday. Who was that? Uh, Fuck, what's her name? The hot blonde. Um, Sorry to my wife if you're listening. Which one? uh, 
Uh, she's yeah, exactly right. Oh, I know a hot blonde on CNN's rare. Uh, is it? It's more common on Fox News. Is it? Yeah. No. That was an Brooke old, Baldwin. That, correct. Okay. Brooke Baldwin. She was Great on there name. for <clears throat> what thirteen years, I think. Okay. Long time. And you're um, saying she's hot. Yeah. Look up Brooke Baldwin. Pull her up. It's worth it. Uh, she's been there for 13 years, a long time, and uh, gone. And she went on air live yesterday and made a speech and just said, I don't know where I'm going and what's going to happen. I'm writing a book, and then I'm hoping for new opportunities. So clearly, she didn't see this coming either. Yeah. Um, she, she did their afternoon shows for those guys, and it was like, look, Trump propped up all of the fucking media. So all these anchors are going to be dropping left and right here as mm -hmm. it's coming up, right? With Biden, Biden personally to his credit, has come out and said, look, man, I, I don't want to talk about Donald Trump. I'm tired of talking about Donald Trump. Don't ask me about him. I don't want to hear any fucking Trump questions. I want to try to get what I came here to get done during my presidency done. I don't want to talk about Donald Trump. However, the media and everybody else wants to talk about him. But he's banned from every single social media platform there is right now. Where does he go next? Because he's not just going to stay quiet and play golf in Marlowe. Yeah, you wouldn't think so. Yeah. So what are you hearing behind the scenes of in L.A.? Of like, where is he going and, and where is he going to pop up at? I mean, I, it, I haven't been hearing a ton, although from what I've been hearing, what I'm trying to speculate on, and one of the more revealing conversations actually was on Clubhouse when Brad Parscale popped on the first. <clears throat> oh, so he was his former campaign, campaign, campaign manager. Yep. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Parscale, and un, it was unfettered Parscale. So, yes, he was too quiet, but then it was suspiciously quiet. So then I wonder, okay, was he just quiet because he was waiting for the impeachment to be done? Um, and impeachment's done now, and he's been talking a little bit, but he hasn't been that loud. So then, okay, does he come up with an... It, does he start just going on Fox? Does he go on Newsmax? Well, he's oh, not going to go on Fox. Not at all, right? It's, and he's not going to be... I mean, like, all the, all the old darlings of the right have, have collapsed back into the establishment because, look, correct. I assume, yeah. and I think this is a reasonable assumption, that... In the same way that establishment people in politics need to keep things a certain way so that themselves personally and their fucking people, when I say their people, I don't mean their constituents. I mean the, the companies that they're beholden to get the money that they need. I assume that it's the same way in the media right now, right? Yeah. Like it's, it, as soon as Fox saw on the writing on the wall, like it looks like Trump is probably going to lose this because he won't stop fucking talking shit to old people <laughs> who are a big part of his fucking voter base. Yep. So... As soon as they saw that, they're like, fuck this guy. And we know the story with Matt Drudge, who was one of his other big proponents, and that's that uh, Trump snubbed him for an interview one time and didn't give him credit for helping get elected. And he went, so he he went, went far left. Yeah, he, yeah. Th there's, a, there's a lot of rumors that some of the same owners at Warner Media that own CNN also own part of Drudge now, but it's not a publicly traded company, so who the fuck knows? Ah. But that, forget about all that. He clearly got butt hurt and, and made a turn against Trump. So Trump doesn't really have. I wonder if he's is he is is he being quiet, or does he not have a megaphone? Yeah, that that is that's a question and it's a relevant one, right? right? Because, because he could talk to, but the, the it's it is relevant. But I think I'm, I think that's wrong because he still has a mailing list of ninety to hundred million people. Yeah, and he would be sending out emails every single day if he wanted to communicate with people. And he's not. And let's face it, he got the highest amount of votes no, for any it, it, sitting president. So, like, there is there weird. is a platform for him. What is happening behind the scenes? Is what, what, yeah, why is he not? Listen, if I were him, and I don't you know, have my thoughts on whether he should be doing rallies, but if I was him, I would be. Why isn't he? Who he, finances that? Because uh, then you got to get police involved. My, my pillow, probably. Oh God. Dude, well, I mean, or or was this just this this did kind of this entire episode where it, he kind of I think he went ahead and eviscerated uh, you know like I said I'm kind of the none of the above guy but he kind of you know I can acknowledge some of the positive stuff that Trump and he clearly he had created something whether it, uh, to, to whatever, whatever degree it was intangible mm -hmm. I mean Jesus fucking Christ look at those crowds he had the last yeah. month before he's like he had a thing. And it's just like he fucking eviscerated it over the course of six weeks. But it doesn't mean that he still couldn't, you know, it, those those rallies were real. Those yeah. crowds were real. He could replicate some. But, uh, OK, did it happen that that he with that one event or that the trail of activities leading up to that one event just extinguished any goodwill that he ever could have had and now became so toxic that he knows that that nobody can associate with him, that he's persona non grata in America other than mar -a lago or whatnot. But that I, that still doesn't feel right. 
um, it still feels like he it, or is he, is he kind of art of warring it because Trump, who seemed like such a, uh, a shrewd strategist in some regards and then everything he then COVID came and, and like every flaw in his ability to strategize seemed forget the morals of it and the ethics. He I was like, dude, you're just fucking up. Like uh, even people, you know, I know people even who could, it did not like him who were like, wait, this guy has a few tricks of up his sleeve negoti- as a negotiator and a strategist. And then like uh, he realized, oh, my God, I fucked up. Uh, I, I, I was I made such a mistake in terms of my strategy. I need to pull back, retrench and go be quiet for a little while. And if I'm going to come back into the public eye, it's got to be uh, it cannot be a, a, a continuation yeah. of whatever just occurred. That may be what's happening. Well, to be clear. Trump's handling of COVID versus his rhetoric about COVID are two very different things. Yeah, but that's like, kind of that's, it is the problem it, yeah. of his entire presidency. I say sure. this all the time. He had a lot of the right answers, but because he was such a cunt, the, the 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 country was not allowed to benefit from those right answers because he couldn't keep his fucking mouth shut. Now, there you go. Yeah, one of my theories is that he was a political suicide bomber. He has come into the political theater now and exposed everyone. I would say distrust in electoral politics and representative democracy is at an all-time low now. And All I, politicians and people, in general. And people will say that that is a negative thing that Trump did. People don't trust politicians anymore because of Trump. Okay, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But he wasn't the dishonest one. Right. Right? He just showed that everybody else was full of shit 99% of the time, except for the 1% of the time they're on camera. Yeah. He did what everybody else was doing, and he did it out in the open. And now everybody's fucking mad that he ruined the party. It's like having a secret, like a girl's fucking titties are hanging out or some shit, and you're the asshole that comes in and tells her whenever all the other fucking pervert (laughs) dudes are looking at her. That's what's happening in fucking Washington, D.C. right now. The fucking curtain got pulled back, and they're like, oh, shit, close the curtain right quick, and now they want to talk about coronavirus and fucking and, and the capital rights and all this other bullshit to try to disguise the fact that these motherfuckers have done everything in their power to put us down here and elevate themselves. Right. For fucking years now. And look, there's going to be a fucking price to pay at some point for this shit. If they think that America, of all places, is going to stand for this, all these dystopian novels that happen all, all throughout time, they didn't have the one thing that America has, and that is a bunch of fucking rednecks with guns. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you think that a bunch of people with small arms... And a little bit of motivation can't disrupt a massive military operation. I invite you to go check out Vietnam or Iraq or Syria or fucking Afghanistan. Good luck, motherfucker. Yeah. And and with that, you know, because I'm I'm looking at all the stuff that you guys were talking about today because it it, it just keeps popping up. Right. Uh, With the L.A. Times and everything else. The the, the breaking news one is um, uh, the NFL has just asked for a hundred percent increase in their TV payments. Uh, for we, the rights to the NFL. You which, and I talk about that at least once a month. Easily. Like, NFL, cancel all your TV contracts, own your content, put it on your own fucking network, and start charging a fortune And for that it. appears as if this is the move they're making. They of like, hey, be. man, That's good either business. you pay us 100% or we're going to our own app. Look, if now, cable companies were fucking reasonable organizations that didn't try to butt fuck people, maybe I'd have a problem with that, but... 83 to 85% of the of the areas in America, when I say areas, I mean how they define an area, right? right? right. How, how cable companies define an area have one choice for cable television and then maybe some uh, other satellite choice. But for cable, hardline cable, they have one choice at 80 plus percent of the jurisdiction. Same thing for Internet in a lot of cases. Yeah. Right. That's called a de facto monopoly. It's supposed to be illegal. It is. And, and so here's where I'm going with this. Um, Same if, thing with if, banks, by the way. Yes, but if, but if the NFL is going to have their own app, banks have their own apps, all this other yeah. shit, right? Trump got the most votes of any highest, you know, of a sitting president of all time. Why is there a Trump Apple app? and Android are not going to ban Bank of America for having an app on their platform. They will absolutely, if Trump tried to put out an app right now, Apple and Google would tell him to get fucked. There's well, no way they're letting him. But what if they? What if he did it Alex Jones style and did Infowars with his? It would own have to be a website, right? But it takes time to do that. Unless he called also, Alex and asked him for that infrastructure, and it's super inefficient too. Also, I think it's the I hire only the best people, and that turns out to not be true. Like he yeah. doesn't know how to hire out for this. Mm. Look what happened with Parscale. It's tough. It's it, tough they, yes. There was this yeah. illusion around, there was this, a, a bit of a narrative built a, a, up around Parscale right after the 2016 election um, that he, that, that oh, uh, uh, Trump won because 
they found uh, some like low level digital marketing dude that, J that Jared and Ivanka used for real estate and they used him uh, for their digital strategy instead of these like corrupt, bloated um, de de uh, Hillary Democratic consultants who botched it for Hillary and Brad Parscale ended up winning the election. And that's how he became camp uh, 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 campaign chair. Correct. And yes. it turns out that was all bullshit. I mean, maybe he was more competent than the Hillary people, <laughs> but he obviously wasn't that competent because the guy turned out to be a disaster. Well, failing so, upward is nothing new in politics or. Sure. No, and, and then the other part is the, the pressure of it, where after that 2016 election, I saw Brad Parscale on every fucking 60 minutes, everything, because everybody wanted to know how he did it, right? Yeah. Uh, and then he became campaign manager. That pressure that comes along with it, and especially with the rhetoric that it had fucking amped up in the media against mm -hmm. Trump and everything else, was so big. It appeared to me as if he just had a fucking mental breakdown. I'm like, sure that was part it, it of it. It reminded me of the Coney guy. To be honest with you, yeah. remember the fucking Coney dude who set up that thing of like, hey, we're gonna go oh, find yeah, yeah, this yeah, general, yeah. Yeah. and then he was walking buck naked down the streets of San Diego, <laughs> and they got him on video. <laughs> Same with Parscale, he was screaming and yeah. like beating some girl or something like. I mean, it was a crazy. Well, story. he grabbed sure. a girl by the arm. He didn't beat her, right? Oh, was wasn't that Lewandowski? Oh, no, that was Lewandowski. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Lewandowski. But, yeah. Uh, sure. Lewandowski. Uh, but going back to the point of like, why is Donald Trump not rolling out something super interesting and innovative on the digital side? He might just be too fucking boomer. Yeah, there's, too, there's a good chance that he just doesn't get it. Right. But you would think Ivanka would step in and get it. So right? the, the the next thing I don't want to want she yes. I, I, if, by Or Don Jr. or whoever. Uh, forget about Don. I mean, Don, DJ, Don, DJ. Don Jr. is having a good time. I don't think he wants to be involved in politics. No, I like don't if, either. If I'm you're, with you. Uh, uh, I would compare him to uh, <laughs> Greg Anthony staying on uh, NBA broadcasts on TNT and not coming back to coach. He's getting paid $3 million a year to fucking talk shit, and there's no pressure. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure Don Jr. is going to stay back, wear his $600 jeans, and throw bombs at people <laughs> you know, from the internet. Uh, Ivanka, on the other hand, does seem to have political aspirations, so you would think that she would step in and fix this problem, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, she's the son that Trump always wanted. Let's be real about that. Yeah. Okay, everybody agree on that? Yes. I, I'm not a fan of Seems her or politics. Or fucking, I like Ivanka. I think Kushner is a cunt, too. And, and I'm not I don't a know fan anything about him, actually. People. Well, I know, I know plenty about him, and the things I know about him, if you're a partner to that man, then you're a piece of shit, too, in my opinion. Right? Uh, his family history and his, his history, and this is, you know, I know, I know some people who were definitely in, in his orbit or he was in their orbit in Manhattan among the Manhattan private school crowd and whatnot. N nobody thought too highly of him. Um, some of that could have been, he yeah. had, a, he had a lot of pressure from, I mean, you know what happened with his, uh, his dad and his family and Chris Christie, right? And why that whole brouhaha. Yeah. And, and he just got a pardon, uh, by the way, his dad, uh, Christian. Yeah. Christian, so. Um, and so, you know, there was a, a lot, he was definitely, uh, a tarred and, and it's kind of another rich kid who was pretty sloppy with his, the, it, it, he wasn't the, if you're doing the top, the power rankings, the top 10 biggest rich kid fucking fuck ups, he wouldn't have made the top 10. So like, he, you know, one thought that low of him, but nobody considered and particularly shrewd and he bought this newspaper uh, this publication called the new york observer and he didn't run it into the ground which puts him at the higher bound of that trust fund kids have done with these businesses um and but then once again there's a bit of a narrative that he stepped in during the 2016 campaign um that he was kind of this like uh out of touch neoliberal coastal neoliberal and then he went with you know what what don uh, what Trump did, which was saw all this this blood boiling in the middle of the country over, you know, the, the hollowing out of America and this populist energy rising. And like Jared had kind of a transformative moment and then helped his fa father in law get elected and implemented the digital strategy and all this. And he's actually a pretty sharp dad. And here's the thing. <coughs> did pretty good on the Middle East. I, look, they're pretty good. I, yeah, that, I, there's, there's now five Middle Eastern countries that have treaties, peace treaties with Israel for the first time. Biden's going to fucking for the first time since Biden, Israel sure. existed in, in 1948. Like, I mean, uh, almost immediately in, after 1948. I don't know if you know what the Six Days War and is and all that shit. Yeah, 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 like yeah. A, a, a proposal was made after some conflict to Arafat that and he would probably know more about this than I do, actually. But there's a proposal made to Arafat back because he's day. Jewish. Uh, yeah, because he follows, <laughs> because yes, because he's a cultural Jew that follows the history of Israel. Yes, absolutely, yeah. uh, it's so, interesting. Uh, <laughs> it is super interesting. Yeah. But Arafat was offered a peace deal. The the PLO was like, "Now nah, we're all set. Get fucked, whatever the fuck." And then we're going to invade and blah blah blah. We get pushed back all the way into Egypt. But the the everybody likes to show these. Like the left likes to show these maps of Israel's territory in 48 and then 69 and then presently, right? Mm -hmm. And how it's been, the Palestinian part has been reduced. The original plan was for a split state. And that was presented to Arafat, I think it was 1969, right? 
I'm not I'm not sure that the wars were 67 and 73 so like all right 67 was one so it was a massive then. okay the 67 was a fucking uh uh, uh fucking 60 to nothing blowout yeah right? it they, was like, they, i mean it was like shit. the 60 war. Uh, yeah was... and israel like quadrupled its land mass and just caused like all right you wanted to invade us and we took you on five on one and yeah. we beat your ass and we're gonna take your land sorry that's manifest destiny by the way us coming here and convincing a bunch of uneducated uh, uh natives <laughs> that that they should do what we tell them to and then showing up with guns when they had sticks that's not manifest destiny. Manifest destiny is somebody invades you and you fuck. You know what? I'm taking twenty percent of your shit now. Right. Yeah. You got to pay the tax, bitch. Yeah. And then seventy three was like they snuck attack him on the holiest holiday on Yom Kippur, yeah. uh, and then it you know the, Isra- the Israelis uh, it took a few L's at the beginning of the war. They counterattacked. You know they put them back on their heels, and then they just said, "All right, we're going to give you this nice chunk of Egypt back, and everyone move on with their life." Yeah. Um, and so that's what happened there. So that you know. Right. But um, anyways, back to Kushner. You can see that there's been, I mean, no, anybody that, that hasn't been living on a different planet knows that there's been tumult between Israel and Middle Eastern countries for a long time. Yeah. And I feel like the most important thing that's happened in foreign policy for America in the last 50 fucking years since the Marshall Plan closed out is this, and it got zero media coverage for the same reason. Tulsi Gabbard talked about this three weeks ago on Rogan's show. Uh, she would hear her fucking fellow democratic congress people say we can't pass this bill yet because it'll fucking land in trump's presidency and we don't want him to look good so the american people went without stimulus checks or important bills that would make sure certain things happened, like laws that we need and things like that those things got postponed until the biden administration took over just to make sure that trump didn't get credit for it right so stuff like that how can we make rational reasonable fact-based decisions if we're not receiving all the facts but that is the problem but we're not going to be for a long time that is the problem Uh, of facebook and and twitter especially correct so i told you so i mentioned i was was mentioning that this clubhouse chat that originally started as uh us you know talking about the new york times coming after clubhouse and them swinging and missing and how this is kind of whatever that Congressman Justin Amash, I always pronounce, uh, who the fuck knows? I don't know Amish. if it's Amash or Amish. 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 He's the right. libertarian guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but he came on. I, I leave the chat. I go do some daytime activity as I come back. And like a bunch of journalists are in the chat, a bunch of, you know, venture capitalists. And like, it's humming. And like two hours later, and Amash is on stage. That evening, that chat, which was going on about 20 hours at that point, becomes five hours of Q&A with Amash. And he gives like, Inside baseball on Congress, and that's really you know oh, how, dude, do you know how giving, it was incredible. Do you know how important that is? You can tell how important it is just by my reaction to his name. My reaction to his name is it's that libertarian guy. When you say that, it's theater of the mind, right? So if you're reading a book, the reason that movies I say this sometimes, but the reason movies never live up to the book is because when a book describes when a book you love describes a chair. I see that chair in my fucking mind. I know what that chair looks like, and when I see it on screen and it's not like that, I'm like. You fucking suck. But that's a ridiculous standard. I have. You know what I mean? But I have. That's a, that's a ridiculous standard. So when, when somebody says libertarian, as uninformed and misinformed, more importantly, as our people are, Americans are, and I'm not a libertarian. I think that ideology is nonsense. But, well, part of the economic part is nonsense. Anyways, when people hear libertarian, they go back. If I'm, if I'm a Democrat, I'll go back to the Democratic talking points of libertarians, and that's what I think Justin Amash is now. But that is not true. Listening to him for five hours, I can learn a lot about who that man is. And if we're not willing to go do that, if I'm not willing to say, I fucking hate you, I want to hear AOC talk for five hours, question and answer, right? Right. That's what I want to hear because I could find out if she actually knows anything at all, which I doubt. Yeah. But maybe she knows something. Maybe there's something called Shaw's Pathway Methodology, and it was a research done, a, a psychological psychological research done on terrorists, right? So we, we tried to track terrorists from the time they were children until they became an actual terrorist and then their their terrorist career, if you want to call it that. And Shaw wanted to uh, identify points of interdiction. Like at 12 years old, if I can stop this kid from being in a madrasa or being in a poor city or being exposed to this or not being exposed to this or whatever it is, I can prevent that person from becoming a terrorist, right? right? So if I can hear how somebody like AOC thinks, I can say, you fucked up way back here change that and your entire life is different now your entire worldview is different 
that's a really important thing to be able to do and that's why long form content is so important now so this is now now I, i'm starting to understand clubhouse here so this is making sense um the, so this yeah this oh continue. they're not the, paying the us answer, for this, by the way they should be no fuck because I, I thought the same thing with we'll tim dillon i was like yo is he sponsored but um uh i can answer the book question for you i have the the definitive answer now mm-hmm. have, having done four audiobooks at this point if you just read a book that is 275 pages uh, it, it comes in on that audiobook at about six and a half hours, anywhere from six to six and a half hours. It's got to be condensed now to a 90 minute movie. So you're you're missing sure five hours of a book. And that, that's the plot point part. But I'm talking about theater of the mind. I'm yeah, talking about it's when, just when, too so, difficult. When somebody <laughs> describes Jack Reacher to me in the book and then I see Tom Cruise, who is five foot six playing him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. no, My, the mind. That's a great movie, by the way. Not a great. It's a really good movie. It's I like the movie. movie yeah, but, but it's not Jack Reacher. The mind yeah. rebels at the idea. It would be like, uh, I don't know. It'd be like Keith David playing me in a movie. For sure. Oh, that happened too. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. That did happen. I, I, but here, here's the thing. <laughs> I, so I'm in the same with Jack Reacher because I, I read the book and then uh, Tom Cruise is in it. And then my buddy who's also been on the show, Michael Raymond James, mm-hmm. he was in that movie <laughs> with him. Uh, he's been on Drinking Bros and Ross Patterson Revolution before. Uh, I was like, hey, man, how was it? And he goes, you know, Tom's rad. Mm-hmm. And it's great. However, it's not the six fucking four dude you're yeah. thinking it's going to be. So. Eh, it if is any what five it is. foot six dude could be six four, it's Tom Cruise. So. Yeah, for yeah, sure. He's that, yeah. his yeah. personality is six foot four. Yeah. Uh, that, but the point is, it's theater of the mind, right? It's the reason. Yes. Yeah. It's the you you have to drill down on that stuff. It's like looking at a looking at a profit loss column on a business in isolation. That's why something called geospatial intelligence is really important. So the idea, every piece of information, like. It, it is a it is a piece of information that is relevant only in the time the information was collected. You understand? So if I have a picture, if I have a satellite picture of you sitting here right now, that information is only relevant insofar as you're still here, right? Once you leave, then that that information doesn't matter anymore until it becomes a pattern that I can recreate at some Mm -hmm. point to find out where you are. But every single piece of information in an intelligence cycle is, is, is individual and only relevant in the time that it's collected, right? Geospatial intelligence adds everything the landscape, the fucking geography, the population, any kind of other presumptions, and then you build algorithms that generate separate models of what might happen and blah, 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 right? That's why this shit is so fucking important. You have to drill down on each individual part and then back way back up and see if it makes sense at the macro level. This is the problem in physics, though. Like, if we had Brian Keating on, he would tell you this right now. Trying to get the fucking uh, uh, the quantum world to talk to the macro world has been impossible for everybody. Yeah. And string theory seemed like it might be the answer for a long time. And now a lot of scientists are like, I don't know. I don't yeah. know if this is going to work. I will ask. Uh, we're we're going to have Neil deGrasse Tyson on in like two weeks. So we'll yeah. ask him then. Uh, now's the point in the show. We get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who has inspired you or helped you become the person you are today. Uh, go to drinkingbros.com to submit, and uh, we, we read it live on air. It just comes in through email, and whatever happens, happens. So we don't screen these. Uh, this one is from Chris Silvestri uh, from Hawaii, a member of Drinking Bro for five years. He's nominating Dallas Garza. Reason for the nomination, my buddy Dallas was a fellow warrant officer in the Army and died in a helicopter crash on Veterans Day in Egypt. He was an awesome dude who everyone admired, not only for his ridiculous good looks, but his positive attitude, his sense of humor, and his love of Texas. Hey, there we go. Uh, we all love him and miss him, and, uh, and a shout-out would be an awesome gift for his family. Of course, cheers. Cheers. Uh, and then cheers, Matt Belinsky, for being on the show today. My pleasure. Before you get out of here, what is one weird prediction that you have for 2021 that we don't know about? Oh! <gasps> Media wise, Hollywood wise, theaters coming back by AMC. God, uh, uh, stonks. I, I think the fucking. I, I think one of the major one of these publications, LA Times, New, uh, New York Times, not going to go out of it. Um, you, you'll see a bit of a mini version of what you saw with the investment banks in two thousand eight. So there's going to be a Lehman Brothers. There's going to be a Lehman Brothers. Yeah, and Who maybe a Bear Stearns. Robin Hood. Uh, um, <laughs> no, Robin Hood doesn't even. That's not even part of it. That that I I do think the Robin Hood CEO is going to be found dead under suspicious circumstances within the next six months. So do I. How about this for uh, Bitcoin hits a hundred thousand this year? Whoa! It's at fifty right now. Fifty fucking five, motherfucker! Is it really? 
I mean, Do you it, have it? it jumped 15k I in the last it. time. I, I knew you and fucking had it. At this point, every dollar that I don't have in it, I'm pissed off. I don't. I have know. It. So is Giorgio mm-hmm. and uh, COVID and low Dan was well. 4.6. Yeah. Was, was it really 4.6? The, the smartest people I know, like the ones who like this motherfucker's smart, yeah, real smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all long Bitcoin. It's uh, the only people. Well, I saw Musk put. Uh, Tesla put 1.5 billion in it, uh-huh. and and another firm just did too recently. Um, yeah, yeah, and you're gonna you're gonna see more. Uh, the city of Miami, and you got to check out what the mayor's doing over there. It's fucking. Do mayor. they? Let me ask you. Do, does does it split? Because no one can afford that. No one no, can no, afford no, can buy, That's the thing. That's the thing. You can b- fucking buy 90 cents worth of Bitcoin. Oh, gotcha. You gotcha, can gotcha, buy gotcha. it down to like the like 21 integers or something. Okay, it's crazy. And that's part. Is of that it. what you did, or do you have like full coins? I have like a cup. You know, I I didn't buy it in full coins, but I have more than a cup. I in the aggregate, and I, I have some Ethereum as well. And if I had more balls and more time, I'd be deeper into the crypto game. Go long he, crypto. Fake Dan is always saying Ethereum. Uh, no, if, no, that's re- real Dan. Real Dan's preaching. Oh, oh yeah, I, oh, it's, oh, more, yes, of a, it's, more, it's more of an efficient. Ethereum, Ethereum isn't about currency though. Ethereum is about their blockchain technologies being used to create a decentralized internet. Ethereum, right now. if it, the Bitcoin, software behind listen, Ethereum is way more important than their fucking actual currency. Uh, if Ethereum is uh, Bitcoin is like Nike. The fucking brand is so strong, it literally would just get it off the. For, it doesn't matter what the. It's fuck a category of one now. People exactly. say Coke. People right, say exactly, Nike. Right. People say Bitcoin, right? Then huh. Ethereum is kind of, uh, you know, is is uh, that with more of functionality. Don't ask me to explain the functionality, but the smartest people I know who have been right on this stuff thus far, they're like, this is what's going to be uh, uh, more, more operable. Then you're going to have like a long chain of of these other coins that are going to start is popping Del up. Del Taco. E- exactly. Sure. Right. Del Re- Taco. Regional. Coin. Regional. The regional versions of fast food places will come up and they're, I mean, their Litecoin has been yeah. around for a while and who gives a fuck about that you can still make money their market uh their their let's see their market cap right now i think is like 10 billion dollars as of this morning giorgio our, our producer uh, he follows this what, what do you you'll, got you'll, you'll see them almost replace stocks kind of for some tech companies like you invest in the company they'll issue a coin i don't purchase know. those coins when they come into public auction and then like as the company does better, the coin value goes up. I think kind of Bi- Binance is one. So like they're a trading platform and they rewarded you with free coin. But as their coin increased in value, you theoretically increased money. Well, you're talking about an IPO company. now, basically. It, yeah. It's basically the same yeah, thing. But yeah. I, it's just, it's I, just in, place, I don't, in place of that. I don't, think, I don't think the traditionalists or the, uh, the establishment people from Wall Street can get involved because they're so used to being able to fucking artificially manipulate the market to make their ends now that they not, they're not going to be able to do that in crypto. Well, but some of, some of the institutions are on board. and that's it, Some it, of them. All, it, listen, it's, they, they have as an long eye as for the ball. Backed, they, all, they, they have an eye for the ball. Yeah. They know, and they can engineer it because they know... All that matters is the dollars flow to it. Yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah. Like the fucking company doesn't have to report earnings. All that has to happen is a bunch more dollars and a bunch more you know, currency got it got printed and got shoved into the universe. It's got to go somewhere. If people believe that this is something that is a, 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 a safe and and you know yeah. pr- a proactive store of value, dollars yeah. will go to it, and that's what's happening. So as of this morning, uh, the market cap on Bitcoin is a hundred. Or is it, it hit a trillion dollars this morning? <laughs> Holy shit! Right, so it's now one twenty eighth of our fucking uh, national debt, one twenty third of our GDP. Wow. And listen, it might fall. It might at fall what point right now? Cr- but it's in the it, long run. Yeah, it's, it's look. Gone it's you don't it's miss gonna, too much. We love having that, you on the show. It, you're it'll, fucking it'll, super interesting. If you're yeah, saying it's going to a hundred. It's uh, going to reach I, a critical mass. It's definitely so going it's, to hundred eventually. My prediction is it may. Okay, are I, you in it, Diamond Hands, for a long time? What was that? Are you in it diamond hands for a long time? You're yeah. holding on to it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Real quick. Uh, so I, I did like a, uh, uh, I did like a Instagram poll or something. I think right around the holidays, uh, right after. Does Bitcoin get to fifty thousand in two thousand twenty-one? And that was like a relevant question. It hit fifty thousand within six weeks. Yeah. 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 yeah so, it did. so, so here's the real question. Laser eyes now. Yeah. For That's sure, new yeah. thing. Laser what's, eyes. What's laser, laser eyes? eyes? Yeah. Don't take your eyes off the prize. Like this fucking <laughs> laser, laser focus with your eye. Anyways, I love it. what's gonna happen when? the market value of Bitcoin surpasses the market value of the U.S. dollar. Because the U.S. dollar, a lot of people that don't know this for whatever reason, the U.S. dollar is the world's reserve currency, right? And that is one of the, the for, forget about our military and our nuclear stockpile and our off our standoff from other countries being a fucking North American hegemon and all that shit. The real power in the U.S. is the fact that, one, we fund the U.N., 
which people can talk shit about the UN. I think they're a bunch of assholes, but we fund 95% of that shit. The other part is the U.S. dollar is the world's reserve currency. When that goes away, a lot of the leverage we have over other countries ends immediately. Like, that day it ends. Then our purchasing power is a, is a big thing. That's another thing that nobody fucking talks about from the Trump administration is that he fucking created a budget deficit with China for the first time and God the fuck knows how long. Like, since the 90s, I think. Yeah. So many things happen there. That'll be the really interesting thing to me. Investing in all that stuff, like I've got plenty of money and all this stuff, but I don't really care one way or the other. I'll live in the woods. I don't care. You know what I mean? But I do appreciate it. I, I follow it in the same way that I bet on shitty sports games just to just to do keep, it. Just to keep yeah, my yeah, attention yeah. on yes, it yes. because it's interesting. But yeah. the really interesting thing to me will be when you start seeing the market cap of Bitcoin specifically creep upward and upward near that 20 trillion 25 30 trillion dollar mark then what are we talking about right are we talking about replacing currency the re world reserve currency with bitcoin are we talking about replacing all currency with crypto at that point because look in 19 fucking 10 imagine telling some farmer right that this little card has all your money on it yeah, credit card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have yeah. any money anymore. There's no yeah. dollars and cents. You just have this card now. And he's like, that sounds a lot like the Mark of the Beast from the fucking, from Revelation. Yeah. I'm out, right? But it's, these, these new modalities and the way we handle fucking exchange happen all the time. It's not very rare. And even in, by the way, even in COVID, no one would take cash, man. Yeah. It was, hey, card only. I don't want to touch you. I don't want you to touch me. Well, now they've added, the fuck now they've added Bluetooth to the card Correct. itself, right? Correct. Where you yes. just tap it on stuff. Yep. So, that those are all, uh, I guess, uh, intra changes. Now the intra interchange is going to be, we're going to shift away from any kind of physical card whatsoever. It's probably going to be associated with some kind of biometric. You would think, right? Feels like it's end, aimed yeah. in that direction. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's because that'll be the most secure way. Like, there's implications to using biometrics to identify yourself in public that aren't great. Iris, right? Iris, yeah. that's just going to be in your but fucking eyes. It is man. what it is, and it's going that way. So, what would be the impetus of keeping the American dollar? or the Japanese yen, or the British pound fucking sterling, or the euro? What would be the point of any of that stuff at that point? Why make it more difficult? I, I agree. Like, the, the, I the, agree. the international money exchange system is a fucking, it's like the insurance companies. It's a total ripoff. It's fucking nonsense. People say, like, well, this market decided this dollar was worth this, and this market decided the yen was worth this. I'm going to take fucking 10% to make that trade for you. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, it's like a painting. Yeah. It's like a fucking boss cap. It's, it's just, just like, all right, great. How much is this? I don't it's, know. It's How, however sense. much yeah. we drive it in this, this auction at Sotheby's, so that anyways, and that's back, what it is. Back to the point. That's the thing I'm waiting for. I want to see when crypto starts to take over actual shit. The stuff that's going on in Miami right now is really fucking interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And let's face it. Miami was built on drug money anyways. This Bitcoin is kind of like drug money right they, now. We don't know they were where this is coming from. They were circumventing the authorities back then, and now they're circumventing them another way through through yeah. a computer. And um, I mean, just from the on the broadest strokes, it's idiot insurance, and it's the dumber the systems get, the better for Bitcoin. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. and that's what I knew that in 2017, 18, I wasn't comfortable. I saw the drop, and I was like, I still believed it. I was like, What did it go down to? Like four thousand or 4, something? Four thousand. Yeah. Luckily, before I, I trusted my instincts that like, wait a second, this is inversely correlated with the strength and, and, and uh, you know, uh, astuteness of the institutions. The dumber the world gets, the more Bitcoin goes up. And I was like, I'm betting on the world getting dumber. And so far, it's been a good bet. Well, I, I did not bet on it. And, uh, and it is a regret because I listened to guys like Giorgio talk about it for two years. And I think, Giorgio, when you were in North Carolina, at one point, it was like $3,400. And... Uh, you got in, got out, got back in, and all that other shit. I refuse to. I have poor person to... brain, so. You know. <laughs> Richard Ryan uh, is uh, Richard Ryan, one of the one of the yeah? original owners of Black Rifle. Holy fucking shit, has dude! Millions of dollars that he can't even find. He's got so much Bitcoin from way from like ten years ago so that dude, he doesn't even remember where all of it is. Dude, he's he's Richard? systematically been trying to find all of his fucking cards i'll tell you a fucking funny story real quick before we get off the air yeah. I, matt you're one of these dudes that just come back dude because we could talk to you for hours but i'd love to um for richard ryan dude we were shooting a sketch at hopefully uh, the irs doesn't show up at his house now like, hey, well, it's not, that money? no no no. here's here's the thing with richard because you're right he doesn't know where some of it's at i was sitting at uh matt's house mm. uh, matt best we were recording a sketch for something maybe 2014 15 mm. uh early on like we were getting ready for something for range 15 or something like that or the podcast whatever it was Richard Ryan, we started having some drinks, and he would not shut the fuck up about Bitcoin. There was probably 12 of us there. 
11 of us laughed at him all night long. Including Matt. This, yes. Who two years later gave Richard a shit ton of money and said, please invest this in Bitcoin. For no me. fucking yes. way. <laughs> yep. So we <laughs> laughed at him forever and I was just like, yo. And he goes, no, man, Bitcoin. By the way, Richard at this, <clears throat> at Matt's house was drinking Coca-Cola out of the glass bottle still. <laughs> He's it. a weird guy. Weird guy. And yeah. I go, hey, man. And he had, Richard had a fucking... Richard had a bunch of money before because of Raider Red and all that yeah, shit. The AT&T deal. Money, yeah. But he was living in like an apartment. And I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? He still is in an apartment right now. I, yeah, but why? I was like, you have he's all one this of the money own, to do he's shit. He's one of the owners of Black Rifle. I'm pretty sure they made like $105 million. I, like it, it, this, this, is, this is getting funny. Ridiculous. But he got in saying. it. He, he lives he like told all of us to get in it. And we were looking at him drinking out of a Coca-Cola bottle well, he was as one an adult. And I said, dude, there's no fucking way I'm not going to do this. How about this? And this ties together a few things we've talked about. Richard, by the way, is also one of the original. He's he. He worked on the original YouTube algorithm with those guys. Correct. Like he was there at the beginning yes. of YouTube. Like I said, yeah, the smartest people. Yeah. So, but this is an interesting story. Um, one of the most, one of the super like interesting things going on in Clubhouse is that Andreessen Horowitz, the venture capital firm, they funded this company and then they're just funneling all their contacts onto the platform to drive the value of the platform but not it's not a it's not a scam it's like no making, that's what you do making it amazing that's like yeah. us, that's like us starting yeah. a new show and we fucking cross exactly. promote it on exactly. our own show yeah. that's yeah. Exactly yeah. I, I could yeah. elaborate but it's been yeah. incredible so one of the things they're doing is like they're having a couple of their vcs interview uh, do awesome interviews every night they've done they did the musk interview they did you know ben tom they had one of the interviews was brian armstrong the ceo mm. of coinbase yeah. which is like the and brian armstrong was gave a super transparent raw interview about crypto and this is it and i believed in this and blah blah, blah and i've seen this thing through and i want to open up this opportunity uh, 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 is our mission to make this available to everyone and he's like yeah i gotta be honest the first few bitcoin me uh, crypto meetups back in san francisco seven eight years ago was pretty weird I think some of the people who were there were actually homeless. Oh, yeah. Or like Dungeons and Dragons yeah. and all that other shit. And I was just like, yo, man, what the fuck and, is and this? And he was talking. And Brian Ars was like, hey, I'm I'm going to end up being one of the godfathers of this entire thing. And like I was looking around at the beginning. I was like, this might be too weird for me. Yeah. And, and <laughs> look, I'll go to a single real quick. I'll look in the camera for Richard Ryan. I laughed at you that night. And now you're going <laughs> to laugh standing over my grave because let's face it, you're going to be buying my grave and then pissing on it and maybe having sex with it. Because you own Bitcoin since like 1990, and I was a fucking idiot. I'm sorry, Richard Ryan, and I love you. Rich, R Richard, as long as I've known him, which is uh, at least since the very first part of 2017, I'm pretty sure, or maybe no, it was before that. It was 2016, early 2016. Has been buying consistently and has never sold. No, Bitcoin. no, he's never sold it. He's never sold it. No, that, I, he, yeah. he's he's he could. I, I'm pretty sure if he could locate all of his fucking crypt, encrypted drives, he could just retire right now. He could he buy to. Austin. Yeah. Like, I don't. Yeah, whatever, man. Uh, Richard Ryan. I'm well, sorry. Well, that's what the Winklevoss they're twins smart. did too, though. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're not dumb either. Oh, they're like. Do you think? Do you think the Winklevoss twins are happier now with half a billion dollars, or would they be happier as Mark Zuckerberg right now with a hundred fucking billion? They might have won the war on that. They one. Did. I'm pretty sure they won the fucking war they because did. you know what they're not doing is sitting in front of the Senate. Like yes, try, go yes, yeah. yes. Go, I challenge you. This is a spending Brewster's millions kind of challenge, but I challenge you to just live your normal life and try to spend half a billion fucking dollars. It, I mean, good fucking luck. Next dude. to impossible. There's no goddamn way. Not enough cocaine. That's why Jerry <laughs> Seinfeld came back and took zero money to do that show until fucking Netflix find it was like, hey, just let us pay you so we can have the content. Yeah. He didn't give a fuck about making money. I promise you. Jerry Seinfeld doesn't need any money. No, he doesn't. But he'll, he'll be the first to tell you how rich he is. And good for him. Fuck. I wish it was us. Uh, either way, Matt, uh, where can everybody find you on social media? Um, Matt Belinsky, M-A-T-T-B-I-L-I-N-S-K-Y. Twitter and Instagram are where you find the good stuff. And uh, mm. as, uh, as everyone hops on a clubhouse, you can find me there. Uh, who knows? We're figuring that one out as we go along. But as you guys listen to this conversation, some interesting shit's happening. So I know everybody keeps talking about it. I've 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 hopped on there, and I get it. I just again not the tech savvy. We'll, we'll get you there. I will I'm figure a, it the fuck I'm, out. I'm just uh, I'm I'm just lurking right now. Like most That's how of the, it starts. Yeah, yeah. Most, yeah. most of the, most yeah. of the people that uh, I that that I follow and that follow me are either just friends or scientists. Because Brian Keating is a guy that was. He, he texted me last night. He's like, you've got to get on here. Finally, yeah. I was like, fine, fuck it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I finally did it. But uh, it's, it is, it's very interesting. It is. It I, is. I like it. I think it would be a good spot for us to do some stuff. But we'll see how it develops. We'll see how it goes. Uh, you are very interesting. Thank you for mm. being here, Thank Matt. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, for D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, Matt Belinsky, I am Ross Patterson. We are the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.